Welcome to the World of Horror podcast. I'm Mom. And I'm Mac. And this is the podcast where we share our love of international horror. Fear is universal, but we are not afraid of subtitles. A disclaimer, the thoughts and opinions expressed are ours only. We have no credentials of any kind. We just like horror and enjoy discussing international horror movies. Also, these discussions will include spoilers. You have been warned. Welcome, Wohos. This week, Mac and I watched the 1997 home invasion film, Funny Games, from Austria, and the 2007 American remake of the same name. We're going to move on to our first segment, Mom and Mac Chat. Hi, Mac. How's it going? Good, Mom. How are you? I'm okay. How's your day? Well, I went for a walk for five miles, and that was good because um, that's, like, just enough time to, like, kind of work out all the, uh, I don't know, kinks in my body and in my mind. So um, I listened to, let me see, I'm trying to think of what podcasts I listened to. But, um, oh, I listened to Kerr Mode's um, podcast. He's a film critic. Mm. And then, um, what else did I do? I just worked on some projects I was supposed to, I thought I should maybe grade, but I didn't feel like it, so I didn't do it. <laughs> oh, and then um, Quinn and I watched When a Stranger Calls, mm-hmm. which is a 1979 home invasion movie with Carol Kane. And it supposedly, the first 20 minutes of it at the time were considered like, you know, really the most terrifying opening to a movie and it's what the opening of scream was based on oh is it basically like the same scene like kind of uh like i'm outside yeah Mm -hmm. a taunting um you know baddie and it keeps Mm -hmm. calling her um and it the movie's not very (laughs) the movie's not very good it's got it's got um well, Carol Kane is really good. She's the babysitter. And Who's then that? later on, in, that's um, um, Kimmy Schmidt's weird neighbor. You know, she's got crazy, like, Carol, hair. Carol Kane. Oh, she does have crazy hair. I love that hair. Yeah. So this was 1979. So, you know, she was a youngin. Um, so she plays the babysitter in the beginning, but then it fast forwards like maybe 15 years later Mm -hmm. and she's got kids of her own and the killer Uh finds her again. Yeah. So the premise is pretty good, but, um, (laughs) I don't know what Quinn texted me at one point. She goes, this might not be very good. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe. Yeah. That's a really Quinn thing to say. She didn't um, finish it, but I, I, I watched the rest of it. So the beginning and ending were good. The parts with Carol Kane in it, but mm-hmm. um, otherwise. I'm just laughing at that. You know, this might not be very good. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Do you remember so when, that's... I mean, the wo- the Wohos weren't there, but we were watching a, a movie. I don't know if you or Quinn had suggested it, but like five minutes in, it was like, oh, we can't watch this. Like, this is barely a movie. Like, it looked like it was shot with like a cell phone. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I, it was like about aliens or something. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think I had suggested it. Yeah, and, and then um, we were like, let's uh, yeah. well, <laughs> <laughs> maybe not. I know, and I keep thinking of movies that I want to do for the squad, including a home invasion movie that's on the list. Mm-hmm. So I'm very excited. Um, I really would like to get your opinion on the home invasion movie Inside, but then I'm also like, Seems mm, like I haven't a lot. seen that one yet. I haven't seen that one yet. That's one of the like that's in recent memory one of the scariest movies I've seen, but it's very upsetting to watch. Well, there's a podcast called The Faculty of Horror, and these mm-hmm. like really smart ladies. How do I get employed? I don't know, but <laughs> they're in Canada and like in Toronto, and they Toronto. do this podcast. Yeah, and. They were talking about inside, and mm. so I know what it's about. Do you know the but, the big, the big thing that it's known for? 
The ce- the cesarean section. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah it's not good. Disturbing. It's not great to no. watch. But that's the only reason why I watched it. So what does that say about me? Funny Games is about to tell us. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. I uh, was wondering what your top five movies of January were. Listen, they (laughs) only a few of them, only like three of them are. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, so that that's the majority, but two of them are not horror. So okay, I'm gonna start from earliest that I watched it. Pop Star. Watched that on New Year's Day. You know that it has Andy Samberg and like um, <laughs> it's basically like the Lonely Island guys. Yes. I really enjoyed it. I was like, this is hilarious. Yeah, um, I'm a big Andy Samberg fan. Yeah. So big, big recommend. Then I watched The Facility, which is just some. It was some stupid, um, a stupid horror movie on Amazon Prime. It was okay. Well, it's stupid, but I liked it. Um, then The Founder. Have you seen that about no. the guy who did, or not the, technically not the guy who thought of McDonald's, but you know, what's Ray Kroc. Oh, and yeah. it's got, it's got a guy yeah, that you like, oh, you've seen it. That is one of my fave movies. Yeah. It's so good because it's like a Pixar movie, but it's insane because it's like, what if Pixar did a movie about capitalism and capitalism was like a good thing? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Like there's a scene where like he he goes up to um to to the McDonald's and he's acting like an alien the the main guy um and he's like they they give him you know the bag of food and he's like what what do I do with this and they're like oh well that that's your food like you go take it and sit down and he's like <laughs> okay and like he's being so ridiculous I loved it then Black Bear which we watched together. Highly mm-hmm. recommend. Great movie. Aubrey Plaza, give her the Oscar. And Coherence. Have you seen that movie? Yes, I have. That was really good. That, that was a recommendation from friend of the show, Quinn. Oh. Actually, we, we shouldn't say friend of the show anymore. Oh, yeah. Since Fixture. she's a part of the show. Fixture of the show. <laughs> 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 yeah. Third rail. No, third, third third rail Thirds. i don't know Thirds. so you're it's the trolley problem but there's three rails which one do you pull the lever on <laughs> <laughs> yep um i don't what know what i you? was trying to think of okay these aren't really in order but well okay i'll tell you my top one but so there's a top the top one is possessor okay Oh, okay. You want me to say it? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, but these other ones were just sort of also good. So it comes at night. You liked that movie? (laughs) 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 Yeah, I did. I did. (laughs) I just remember I saw it in theaters, and I was like, I hate this. Maybe I need to watch oh. it again with you. I thought I thought it was quite good. Um, <laughs> Raghav Raman 2.0, that's the serial killer oh. Indian movie. Mm-hmm. Um, Back on host. your bullshit, I see. Ho- what? Host. No, no, no. That, that's yeah. what people say. That's what people say. It's, it's not like a, mean? a mean thing. If you're back on your bullshit, it means like, you know, you, that like the bullshit in this sense is the thing that you like. And so I was just saying, basically, yes, I know that you were enjoying Indian horror movies. That was all I was conveying yeah. with that statement. <laughs> well, speaking of that, Tumbad. <laughs> so Tumbad. I've got two, I've got two Indian movies and, and then the rest are, I don't know, I guess American and less possessor and host are Canadian. But why anyway. was Possess your, your number one January movie? Oh my God. <laughs> I thought that it did so much so well. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a body swap movie, kind of. And um, 
but that's the, scary. but the whole the whole deal that you you know you kidnap the person's body that you're gonna like jack into um that's sickening but it makes sense like I mean, if this would ever work, it makes sense that you you might have to, but you might also have to discard the body if, if for example, the first body, she kills somebody mm-hmm. in public. Yeah. So she's either going to be um, executed or she does mm-hmm. get, you know, killed, death or suicide by cop. But um, the fact that she jacked into a guy's body and it seemed like maybe she never had done that before. Mm, that is Just interesting. Be, based on how she was touching him mm-hmm. and, um, you know, checking out his dick and just like walking around in his skin and everything. And um, I thought Christopher Abbott just did so well. Like I was totally convinced that like she was inside him and. I don't know. It was just so awesome. And the violence, um, Sean Bean has one of the worst deaths. Well, he actually, he doesn't die, but one of the worst attacks I've ever seen. <laughs> and Sean Bean is sort of famous for dying in movies. So I really <laughs> thought he was going to die. The um, one who got away. But then it goes through this sort of weird trippy thing where they're sort of fighting with each other mm-hmm. with that, he's got the mask mm. of her on him and price of admission right there i mean just Lord. chef's kiss amazing like god the scene when he's like her head's like a balloon and he pops it yeah i was like yeah mr mr cronenberg's son you're great <laughs> yeah so i watched that twice in the same week and uh, I watched, I think I watched them on, on my own and then I got y'all to watch it with me. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, but I would watch it again, mm-hmm. like in a heartbeat. I just thought it was great. Mm-hmm. Let's get into it. Okay. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> Not really looking forward to this one. Oh, really? But, Not yeah. a big fan? No. Mm. In fact, the more I think about it, the less I like it. Wow. But. But let's let's just get into it. So okay, let's just for get this into week, it. we watched Funny Games, which in its original version starred Suzanne Lothar, Ulrich Muha Muhe, Ulrich Muhe, Stefan Klapsinski, Arno Frisch, and Frank Gehring. And then in its 2007 version, Naomi Watts, Tim Roth. Uh, Devon Gearhart, Michael Pitt, and Brady Corbett. I've got a lot of opinions. I have some sad trivia. Oh, no. Well, first of all, everyone in the 2007 version, so far as I know, is still alive. Okay. But three of the cast members of the original have died. Oh, rest in peace. Now, did you know that Suzanne and Ulrich were actually a married couple? That surprises me, actually. They were. Um, mm. Ulrich um, Ulrich died in 2007 Aww. of um, some kind of cancer, pancreatic cancer or stomach cancer, I don't remember. And Suzanne took her own life five Aww. years later. That's sad. It's sad, but it also makes me angry because you know my policy on on taking your own life when you have children. She had two with Ulrich, so. But, um, so he was 2007, she was 2012, and uh, Frank Gearing, who played uh, Peter, the, mm. you know, f- fat guy, whatever. <laughs> Quote, unquote, Tubby, even though I was like, tubby, what? Tubby, what, yeah. What on this guy is fat? <laughs> <laughs> um, apparently an overdose, a drug overdose. Oh. Okay, here's some other trivia. It's not quite so sad. It's from IMDb. So Paul says uh, says the line, we're not up to feature film length yet at exactly the 95-minute mark of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, director Michael Haneke has said he, that he never intended Funny Games to be a horror film. Instead, his idea was to make a film with a moralistic comment about the influence of media violence on society. 
I see that. When the film was screened at Cannes in 1997, it shocked the audience badly enough that many viewers, including some film critics, walked out of the screening. I can see that. Once once you get to this one particular scene, I didn't, y'all, I, I had said that I had seen this movie before, but then when I was watching it, I was like, oh, I stopped the movie here. So uh, I walked out, metaphorically. Yeah. So that makes total sense. So... All right, well, let's go through the plot. Um, the plot's exactly the same in the original and the remake. Not a thing and different. No. <laughs> really, we can, I don't know what we're going to talk about, but really it's it's cast differences. I, I, that's the only thing. And that's, I feel like it, it would make sense almost to like maybe compare and contrast because didn't it, the, um, the remake, the original director was a part of, correct? Is that right? I thought he oh, was yeah. involved. Yeah. So I feel like it, it just really is, okay, one of them is from Austria and one of them is from America. Pick your flavor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but in, like in a lot of cases, as we've seen from this podcast, um, that, you know, the remake in, in a, the American style is not good, subpar, mm -hmm. um, unless you're talking about the ring, um, which, you know, the remake and the original are about the same. Yeah, uh, there there really are like differences. The um, yeah. But the remake's but the a remakes, standalone, I feel like. Yeah. Um, but this this one is pretty much the same. It, so, it, it, like, if you don't want to read subtitles, watch the American version. And it kind of made me... I, okay, well, okay, I will say this is... I feel like it was pretty close on all aspects except... Um, the actor, the Austrian Paul, I think is worlds better than, um, or wait, oh yeah, or yeah, um, than American Paul. Like the, he in the yeah. Austrian one, he has so much charisma. Like he, yeah, eats up that smarmy like little dickhead role. Because I feel like I feel like the Peter um, guy is about the same. You know, they even look the same to me. But like. I didn't like I didn't enjoy American Paul that, that much. I was kind of like, eh. he looked really like a baby. Whereas like this guy, I don't know. He looked like there was just something like when I think of this movie, I think of him. Like, I feel like he ate this movie up and yeah, it's his. I totally agree with you. Um, I watched a review on YouTube or something and the guy on YouTube really loved the American Paul and I like him as an actor. I think he's fun. He's fun mm -hmm. to watch, but I just thought he was like an asshole or like a douchebag. He didn't scare me at all. He just yeah. seemed like this fucking guy, you know, whereas the Austrian guy was menacing. <laughs> he Chilling. scared me. Yeah. 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 And, and the scenes, um, I even feel like, again, the wardrobe is like not, I mean, there, there weren't, they were, it was very similar, but <laughs> there is... I was looking really closely at the American, um, you know, dynamic duo, and I was like, even the Austrian clothes, I don't know, look a little bit better on these guys. Like, I don't know, may maybe that's me just being like, I don't know much about Austria, so like maybe anything I see, I'm like, yep. But it just, uh, the two of them, Paul and Peter and Tom, <laughs> the third Tom, <laughs> um, I feel like. Yeah, I really preferred the Austrian. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, just briefly, um, <laughs> that we we have our family. They seem very wholesome and sweet, and uh, not a care uh, in the world. Uh, father, father, mother, son, and dog um, arrive at their holiday home, and uh, I'm just going to sort of zoom through this. Okay. So. Then what happens is these two kids, Peter and Paul, who are dressed sort of in these golfing clothes, all white, white gloves, everything. Paul's got short um, shorts. And Peter, um, he first he's, he comes over and he's very polite and sort of like deferential. And he just, he's so sorry. And he just wants to borrow some eggs. I do like this scene a lot. Yeah, it's pretty great. Yeah, because um, uh, there's like a, because... I mean, obviously us watching it, we know that it's menacing, but there's kind of just like a shift to where it really, because I feel like a little bit of what this movie does well is like, 
I don't know, play with like social norms and stuff and like Mm -hmm. what you're supposed to do. And they just don't do that. And, or the, mm-hmm. they're like a, an immovable force, you know, and this family has no idea what to do. Like, um, it, it just, it gets slightly menacing without them ever having to like touch a weapon ever. It's very, I felt like it was really masterful in both versions. Yeah. And, um, Anna is very, you know, polite to, oh, why? Sure. But then he drops the eggs and he wants four more eggs. And, um, he knocks her phone into the dishwater and and so like almost immediately he's become a nuisance and she's just like flustered and she doesn't know what to do and then um the georg comes back with um the boy and he's just like oh hi what's going on and she's like throw these two bums out and he's like what are you talking about like what's going on she's like don't you trust me like just there's also the scene before this where Paul, like he he walks in and he's like, "Nice golf clubs, like can I try one?" And that I mean, like, it, like I just felt like that was just so good because if you can, I was just putting myself in that situation of like, I just arrived to my vacation home that I've been very excited. Mm-hmm. I don't know you. I don't fucking care about you or what you think of me. And now you want to like touch my stuff and like do, but like, what can I say? Um, I mean, yeah. I would have said get the fuck out, like, I think a lot earlier, but um, maybe Austrians are, like, a lot nicer than me. Like, I feel like I would have been like, you can't come in my house. <laughs> um, but, yeah, then then he leaves with the golf club, and we there's a scene where – because the dog that they have has been barking at them the whole time, and then the dog's barks just stop, so it's kind of like – and I feel like after he comes back with the golf club, I don't know, it's just – everything is just so – feels so wrong. Yeah. And he actually um, hits Georg with the golf club. Um, and he later he says in, in this sort of teasing way, well, I had to test the golf club out somehow. Yeah, because he um, he says, like, look what I have in my pocket. It's a, And he's like, what is it? And Peter says, it's a golf ball. And he said, right, it's the golf ball. So if I didn't, if this is still here, that means I didn't hit it. But I had to test it somehow. And it's like, no. Oh, no, no, no. So then, um, then basically for the rest of the movie, these two boys torture this family. First of all, it starts off with the hot and cold game. Like when, you know, you're trying to find something and your partner will say that's hot, you know, you're getting colder, colder. So, um, for the dog. So, so she Anna finds the dog, and of course it's dead. And there's in a the scene because he's kind of teasing her as she's looking. As I mean, again, I just feel like it, this movie. I don't know. I thought it did a great job sometimes of making me think like, what the what would I do if like you're you know you're looking for your dead dog and this mm-hmm. that this guy murdered and he's saying warm cold cold and there's nothing you can or seemingly there's nothing you can do and while while um ann's back is turned he he looks at the camera and winks because yeah he's putting on a good show for the audience um so right. we already have breaking the fourth wall which is what i think does make set this movie apart from just your average oh torture yeah porn and i do want to talk about that like if it, if we liked it or not or yeah. you know it's overdone or done, whatever. Um, okay, let's see. What, at one point, Paul asked the family if they want to bet whether they'll be alive by nine o'clock in the morning, next morning. Terrifying. Um, and there's another, that's another breaking of the fourth wall too, isn't it? Where he yeah, says, he turns, like, what do you think? Yeah, he looks at the um, he looks at the camera and he says, like, what do you think their odds are? Like, wh- who are you betting on? And it's just so... I really, so Tim Roth is in, uh, that's his name, right? Is in the American yes. one. And it, in a way, it kind of reminded me of, I, uh, in Reservoir Dogs, the scene at the end where they open up the trunk. And also it's like the end of Inglorious Bastards too, is like, and all the characters are looking down at the camera. I read like an analysis of it once. Gosh, not to talk about Quentin Tarantino, but it was saying that in this moment, some people like, analyzed it and thought it was like looking at the audience kind of like you are a part of this a little bit and Mm. um i just feel like it it 
it feels smarmy because obviously you're watching it. And the the thing about the movie is I feel like it, it feels like a lot of things are in real time. Like there are scenes that go on way too long because it's just what is happening to these people. And so then to be regarded as like, and you're a part of this and you like it, don't you? When, when you watch, I mean, it's not easy to watch. It's horrible. Like it, it's not, it's not an enjoyable movie. Like, uh, they were just kind of, especially watching the remake. I was like, I've already seen this, you know, really. And I was like, I don't want to watch it again. Like it's Mm -hmm. not fun, but, but then, I mean, what is fun then if I like watching horror movies where people get murdered you know like this is the real fallout of violence um so yeah so um they make anna take off her clothes um they make they put george tell her to take off her clothes right and they also put the little before that they put the little boy's head in a pillowcase um the little boy escapes to another house like the neighbor's house but he discovers that family has been massacred and um he has a gun he finds a gun and um when paul you know comes upon him paul says shoot like pull the trigger um knowing that it doesn't have any ammunition in it so they and he bring... tells him to cock it too so like the kid even if he just never had a chance you know no Brings them back home. So that's, I, okay, I know this is going to sound weird, but I kind of like that moment, not just in horror movies, but like I'm thinking of um, Mad Max with Charlize Theron, mm-hmm. whatever that one's called. Um, Mad Max Fury Road? Yeah. Where she's trying to find this um oasis basically Mm -hmm. this like you know wetland Mm -hmm. and um when when she and she learns that she has passed it and it's gone and that there is it doesn't exist and it's all desert and she just falls to her knees and she just like is defeated and i don't know why but i love moments of defeat (laughs) i feel like when they're done well like when they also set it up that you the audience kind of have something to hang your hat on like okay like the boy escaped i mean maybe he and it's just like no you know they they gave you not not just a little dangle of hope but they really were like oh let's let it play out no (laughs) and i think the little boy in the american version he's great his face i was gonna say his face once once he realizes that he's fucked it's so horrifying yeah, he's just like, he's his face. He, oh, I just can't describe it, but the, that kid was a very good actor. Give that very kid an convincing. Oscar. So when they get back to the house, um, there's a scene. We're getting to the scene where Mac originally walked out. <laughs> so uh, Paul, they're doing this sort of like eeny, meeny, miny, mo game. Um, and Paul's like, I'm going to go get some food. Does anybody want anything? And he goes in the kitchen and I read something or saw something that said, this is kind of like us. Like we might like watching a movie, like walk away and go into the kitchen. Um, but while that is occurring, they, you know, they get to the eeny, meeny, miny, mo part and they kill the little boy. And uh, Peter kills the little boy. I feel like this is also, I mean, because, okay, we're talking about, like, depiction of child death, which is horrible. I feel like this way is so impactful. I mean, it's what people always say, you know, is, like, your imagination is way better than anything anyone can show you. And, like, when when, when we hear the gunshot and we hear the screams of the parents, you know, it's just horrible. Like, you don't need to see this Mm -mm. physically happen. You shouldn't. I think that would have really cheapened it and would have been way less impactful than when you know it's happened and then it switches and you just see the aftermath. Because I feel like that's what this movie – I was feeling – I I will say, again, I don't think this is a very enjoyable movie and I wouldn't necessarily say like I liked it and I would like watching it again. But – I feel like I got in a way a lot of what the director was saying and I agreed with it. Like 
the um have you seen that Michelle Na- McNamara docu docu series um gone or what is it called like gone into the dark or I'll be gone in oh, the dark Oh no I ha- I haven't Mm-mm. big recommend it it really explores um what happens after you are go through a traumatic thing because I mean a lot of times when we hear about people who are a part of like a really horrible crime you just hear about the crime and then you might see them like you know 10 years later or in court but this one couple who um got attacked by the um east area yeah the golden state killer they were talking about how like then their house was a crime scene and like so even Mm -hmm. though they they had just gone through this horrible thing that you would obviously want to deep you know process with your partner it's like now they had to get all of their things rifled through by the police and you know they just had no moment of reprieve and i've never i just never it makes sense but i've never thought about it and i felt like this movie drives at home a lot of just like like when we watch a violent movie you know you're just seeing like boom boom and like maybe the movie would end and you know even though when i saw that that the child had been killed i the first time i was like peace out I get why the movie keeps going though, because it's like in real life, there's a fallout, you know, after a death and like you see these parents like have to figure out how to both try not to process this horrible thing and save themselves. And it's like, yeah, that's real life. It's not easy. Yeah. This might be the best scene in the film, in my opinion. I agree. Because... Uh, Paul says, you fucked up, Peter. Like, why didn't you kill the kid? Now the stakes are gone, you know, and they leave the house. Mm -hmm. Um, And so then we're left with, and I think somebody said this scene is like 12 minutes long. It's so long. And it's like one take. Mm -hmm. And um, so Anna um, gets herself free of her tape. Um, She's been taped with her arms behind her back and stuff like that. And then um, I don't know. She hops over to Georg, but she goes into the kitchen. Isn't that right? Because when he, when she leaves the room, he, in the original, lets out such a sound. It's so like of sorrow. Like, yeah. Oh despair. my gosh. Yes. Ultimate He's despair. Ha- just howling just howling i do think this movie and, it was an interesting depiction of like this married couple like it i thought it was cool that like i mean i don't think it's cool you know but like the the male you know like the the man the patriarch of the family is immobilized right from the beginning you know he mm-hmm, can't mm-hmm. really do anything to do that um you know uh uh traditional role of caretaker and protector um but like Anne steps up like she Mm -hmm. i mean i think not not that i'm saying she wouldn't have if he hadn't been immobilized you know but she's like the one who's taking care of him and it's but but it's it's not just taking care it's like she loves him and she's like i we need to you know protect like this is we can't deal with this right now we have to you know escape and she's helping him and she's like you know don't it's okay and she's like you know rubbing his face and i thought that that was a really sweet scene and a thing to note is in this it's a really wide shot of the living room and in the right corner is the body of their son and there's blood all over the wall and on the tv which i feel like yes. i know might be a little bit of a sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah um Let's see. So now the task for Georg is to dry out the phone with a um, hair dryer, and Anna is going to go, I don't know, try to get some help. Um, that doesn't work out. <laughs> this reminds they all me of end Wolf up, Creek. Yeah, they all end up back at the house, and um, Paul is just still playing with her. He makes her pray. Um, he says if she says the prayer backwards completely correctly, she can decide if she's killed or her husband is killed and how. And um, they can either choose the 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 quick and quote unquote like 
less painless gun to the head or knife slow agonizing knife he says what a great choice and he's like taunting her like prove how much you love your husband because you can have it so that we blow his head off but we stab you to death and it's like wow you really put me in a rock and a hard place like <laughs> and she's just like she's just done she's like spent. she's just she's destroyed um and but at this point, this is where the biggest breaking of the fourth wall happens because she picks up the shotgun and shoots Peter dead and he flies into the wall and he's dead. But then um, Paul grabs the remote control and rewinds the movie so that Peter doesn't isn't dead. And when she goes to grab the shotgun, he grabs it from her. And I mean, to me, I feel like we can surmise then so much of the movie, perhaps that had to happen, like putting the phone in the sink, like maybe they were like, oh, like I, I could I could just see all these moments then where like maybe like the first run through um, of you know, they they were able to use the phone to call the police or something like you got to knock the phone into the water, you know, um, and mm. because the whole point of this is like it's got to be an entertaining movie and we decide, you know, and these are puppets in our play. And um, again, I mean, I've, I feel like I, again, do I think that this is a, a perfect, ex, um, you know, analysis of that idea of the impact of, of violent depictions in our society? I don't think, I don't think it's a, an amazing movie, but I see what he's saying and I am like, okay, you know, you're doing some things. Yeah. Um, after that, they shoot um, Georg dead. And then it's the next morning and they're taking Anna onto a boat. Um, this actually is my favorite scene. I did enjoy this quite a lot. This doesn't last very long. <laughs> I was talking to Quinn about it. And this may be another fuck you from the director <laughs> to me. Because I really like this part where they're talking about um reality the nature of reality and and fiction and and real life and all this stuff and i thought it was i'm like yeah talk some more i want to hear more about this um and at one point uh paul says what time is it it's a little after eight and they just like push <laughs> anna backwards into the water so unceremoniously her... just like yeah. she's dead like oh, oh yeah throw, throw her back there and it's like i thought I did think that that was amazing of just like, I mean, to, to have it have been such a, a big deal, the idea of them killing, cause they draw, they drew it out so long. And then when the deed is done, just like, oh, pfft, throw off the boat. And <laughs> it's like without a second thought. Cause they, they, they and even Peter's like, dude, <laughs> why'd you do that? She had another hour. Like, what are you doing? And he's like, yeah, but it's just too tough to, like, sail the boat like this. And also he says, also, I'm getting kind of hungry. And, it's, <laughs> and they just uh, start laughing. <laughs> uh, it's hilarious. So they go to the, the final scene is they go to the neighbors on the other side to ask for some eggs. And then there's another shot of fucking Paul looking into the camera. Okay. And, mm -hmm. and his little face. That is the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds to me, Mac, like you liked it more than I did. I think I probably did. What are we because waiting Because I, in? well, I, I didn't even think. Mm, remote control. Eggs, eggs. Should eggs, be eggs. Eggs, eggs, eggs. eggs. Eggs, 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 eggs. <laughs> eggs, eggs, okay. eggs, eggs. Uh, I don't know. I guess I'd give it three. I'm not, I, no, I don't like it. I really don't like this movie. And I also feel like it's pretentious and like, yeah, I know there's violence in film. Like, yeah. you don't have to lecture to me, Michael Haneke. And also, like, the the first, like the wink in the beginning, I liked that. That was good. I have to say. But I got really tired of him addressing the camera. 
Um, yeah, I think uh, there was a few that could have been cut out. I, I honestly, as as um, I don't know, cheesy as it was, I did really like the rewinding scene because that one, I don't know, cemented to me the idea of they had no chance ever. Like this movie that you're watching, you you need to know that there was absolutely no way they were ever going to get out because I feel like they were trying to say that that's. I don't even know what they're trying to say with that, but you know, obviously that can be tied to, you know, if you're watching like a slasher movie and you're kind of like, hey, 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 you're totally going to die, you know, and, but now you're watching it like, do you think she deserves to die? Like, do you think she deserves to get, you know, her revenge? Um, I don't know. That's the way I interpret it. I would say I agree with you. I think it is, I also think it's pretentious. And I mean, just from the opening scene where they're listening to classical music and then it jumps cut to like metal i was like okay like <laughs> i don't know um not my fave i think the performances were pretty good and like um it was a beautiful beautifully shot movie a lot of a lot of gorgeous landscapes i mean not that the director can take credit for that but i mean the house that they were in was really pretty <laughs> but yeah i would say i wouldn't really recommend it to anyone you know i well, that, that was my question to Quinn, is who is this movie for? Do you have some guys. a thought? I think some guys. I <laughs> That's only actually think... what I said, too. Really? I, yeah. I, can see, I don't see a lot of women enjoying this. Um, in the same way that I'm like, it, it, not, not in the same way of Martyrs, but in a similar way. Because, I mean, also, there's the, the scene, I, to me... I'm sure to everyone else is the point, but the scene, you know, where they make Anne, Anna, um, you know, strip, I mean, it's horrible. And it's like, real, like, this is, you know, what we got to do here. And I didn't, I think, I honestly think that I get what they were doing is they're really driving at home that they are bad mofos, but I could have gotten that anyway when they killed the kid. Like, you don't need to humiliate this woman like this. And so, yeah, I just... I don't think it's necessary, a necessary movie. Maybe as a short film, but this long, mm. <laughs> it's so Yeah. Long. It felt um, like by the end, I was like, oh, God. So I really like Naomi. I, I liked the original cast, Suzanne um, Lothar. I thought she did mm -hmm. fine, but I thought Naomi did awesome um, in this role. I, I preferred Ulrich, I have to mm -hmm. say, to Tim. Um, I didn't like Tim's performance at all. You, okay. I thought it was lazy. I don't. I don't. I didn't <laughs> see that. Like I thought he, not that I thought he was really, but but to me it felt realistic of a tired. I mean, I did think he seemed tired, but then I was also like, well, he's been hurting for like hours. Um, mm -hmm. But Mans has a horrible American accent. Like there was a scene where he really was like, "What are you doing right now?" And it's like, "No, dude. Like, I'd rather him just be Irish for no reason." <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we already talked about um, our favorite Paul. Um, Loads better Peter than Edge. American Paul. I think I think I like the American Peter better, but. I did too. He was pretty yeah. sweet, but they yeah. really were like they casted those two like, yeah, you know, one in the same. Yeah. So now, if you were to remake Funny Games, mm. Mac, do you have any thoughts about like, and and you're like uh, you're like I don't really want to remake it, but somebody was like, here's a bunch of cash, you, you know, you to. can remake you can remake this film. Like, what would you do mm. to update it or change it? You'd have to update a lot since now we have the internet. Like, what? How? Mm -hmm. How could they? How could they? You know, suspend their whole internet connection. Well, and that was, I guess, I don't know. A little, I was a bit confused at times where I was like, "Have they literally gone to like?" First off, maybe I just don't know about vacation homes, but like, what is this? Like, where are they? Like, what? And I was like, <laughs> "How do they know everybody?" Like. This many people know this many people with boats, and um, it yeah, that was completely foreign to me. <laughs> I mean, I really no offense to anyone who has a vacation home, but I there was a part not that I agree with killing rich, I do not, they should not have killed this family, but there was a scene where they're kind of taunting them and they're like, Oh, do you not know where this is? Because you're never, you're probably only here like a few days out of the year, and I was like, I do think it's dumb 
to own a whole piece of property and only go to it a few days out of the year when there are people who don't have homes. But don't kill them. <laughs> I felt like some of it was a bit of a like, was it like a commentary about like rich people? I don't, I couldn't tell. Like, I didn't know well, what they that, could have possibly been saying. There's that one part where um, Paul says, he's talking about Peter, and he's like, this poor guy, his parents are drug mm. addicts. And he is a drug addict. And and then he's I, like, I, I but he's like, like this scene. He's like, that's all a lie. You think this guy's yeah. underprivileged? This he's a brat, you know. <laughs> so I <laughs> um I guess Well, I like that too, because I felt like they were trying to say like, oh, you're trying to look for like maybe you're trying to think of a reason why we're doing this when the whole point yeah, is. Yeah, there, there is isn't. No There's mm-hmm. no reason. There's no backstory well, or yeah. Would it be okay with you if we moved on to the what has Maxine segment? After yeah. you give yeah. your rating of an eggs, oh, what I'm is your rating? Three eggs and one broken egg, three and a half eggs, um, okay. in a dog bowl. Because, <laughs> yeah, I would not. I couldn't say I recommend it. I don't one hundred percent hate it, but I don't think I'd ever watch it again. Yeah, and you don't need to watch both. <laughs> so I made a list of home invasion movies starting from 1954 but then i highlighted the ones that had attacks with no motive Ooh. and i so i wanted to go through those first see if you've seen those um and then go through the other ones i guess uh clockwork orange 1971 no last house on the left 1972 no Black Christmas, 1974. Yes. Have you seen any of the other two Black Christmas, Sai? Yes. The, not the newest, but the, the first remake is Buck Wild. It is <laughs> a, it has Michelle Trachtenberg, and it's just a very t- early 2000s movie. And I would recommend it if you were to watch it with a friend, knowing that it's going to be bad. But that's an it's an enjoyable thing if you go in okay. going like I'm not gonna like this. <laughs> okay, uh, when a stranger calls, I know you haven't seen that. 1979, Angst. Okay, this is the one that I want to watch with you. Oh. Um, it's Austrian. It's from '83, oh, yeah. and um, I I'm pretty sure it influenced <laughs> Haneke um, because it's '83 and. Mm-hmm. Um, it's an attack with no motive. Interesting. Them, which is, I've, I've seen it. It's a French movie, Il, um, mm-hmm. about the attackers are children, like literally children. Um, <laughs> the Strangers, 2008. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Wait. Um, that's w- yeah, The yeah, Strangers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's one that um, Quinn says she will never watch again. <laughs> It was terrifying when I watched it as a kid. I mean, I was like, oh, I'm going to die. This is how I'm going to die, probably. <laughs> I should say, Home I think Invasion... You... Oh, what were we going to say? I think you and I saw the, that one. Oh, I th- yeah, I think we did. And um, I can't believe I haven't mentioned it yet, but the when I was a child, I was very scared of a... I... Probably because, I mean, I have anxiety. And now, now they just present in, um, you know, adult ways like, oh, am I going to get mad at this person at my job? I don't want to be mad today. Um, <laughs> but my anxieties back then were, how am I going to die? And I don't know how, what, what my little brain was doing, but I was terrified of just the idea of a home invasion. And I just thought it was always around the corner. I remember one time S- Sam was tasked with watching me. And he went over to a friend's house or something. And I mean, you and dad were just like out for, it wasn't even for like a whole day or anything, but it was nighttime and I was alone in the house. And I just remember being so scared. Like I was sitting, cause I, I was looking at the screen door that was like, you know, I could see outside and I just, I was paralyzed with fear. Like I couldn't move from there. Cause I was like, well, if I move, then somebody's going to be there and they're going to like jump in. And I was just sitting there crying. And now when I think about that, now, oh, I'm like, no. what's wrong? Like, oh my God. Like, cause 
it would be one thing if we ever experienced like a burglary, but we didn't. Like I've never been in an actual scary situation in my life. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, um, movies like this used to freak me out. Not anymore. Nobody's going to break into my apartment. The Purge, 2013. Yes. Gosh, I have a lot of feelings about The Purge. Have you seen all The Purges? I, yes. And I watched the first season of The Purge TV show. Oh, okay. I like it. Uh, <laughs> there's one called Home Sweet Home from 2013. I don't think so. Um, Torment from 2013. That one sounds like a doozy. Really? Woo! What was it about? Yeah. Um, it's an attack with no motive, but um, they have to take, they kill everybody except one person, and then they take that person with them. That's their, uh, you know, freaky M O. Yeah. Wait, I take I, a little I, bit of umbrage with this, with only the purge being on it, because I do feel like there was a motive for the purge. Yeah, because in the first one, they go after the family because they take in this guy who asks, like, begs, begs to be let in because event. these. Yeah, because yeah. the people are chasing him and they're they're like, well, he's – and the purge people are like, give us to him and we won't kill you because he's vermin and we need to extir – you know, little um, – but then they do just kill yeah. the family for well, no reason. Well, okay. I mean what I kind of meant by no motive was like no like personal motive. Oh, like, okay, okay, okay. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. You done me wrong and I got to get you back or I want to steal all your jewelry or something like that, but – um, let's That's see. True. Mischief Night. Mischief Night from 2014. No, never heard of that. That one that one sounds pretty cool, too. Um, sounds it's like a kind Christmas of twist, movie. <laughs> it, twisty, turny one. Uh, how about Knock Knock from 2015? Oh, I feel like I have. With, with Keanu. Oh, I didn't finish it. Yeah, that's funny. Quinn didn't either. She just turned it off at some point. It made me too anxious. And then uh, Incident at Ghostland um, from Pascal Lugy. Um, you haven't seen it. I have. And at first I was like, meh, but I can't stop thinking about it. So I think oh. you should watch it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so those are all the ones with no motives. Here are some others. Okay. Um, suddenly from 1954 in Cult. And so... What Quinn and I have decided to do on the off weeks mm -hmm. is connect older movies oh. to our main movie. So that's cool. And I didn't want to show up to those conversations, you know, empty handed. So I, <laughs> you know, have been watching these older movies. Um, and so that's why, you know, they're on the list. But suddenly 1954 in Cold Blood, 1967. Wait Until Dark, 1967. Play Misty for Me. That's the one with um, Julie Walter. Mm. I told you about. Alone in the Dark, 1982. Panic Room, 2002. Mm -mm. Swim Fam, 2002. No, but I've heard of it. <laughs> I've heard of it too. High Tension, 2003. No. That's another French. Oh. Though, them French, French, French people, they, they know how to make a make a scary movie. The Uninvited Guest. This is the one that I want to do for Squad. Oh, okay. I believe it's Spanish. It's Spanish language, but I think it's Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, in, inside. Yes. Yes. Terrifying. The, collect, the Collector. Yes. Not good. Somebody said it was kind of like a home invasion um, movie if the home invader was Jigsaw. Yeah, that's perfect. Like, right on the money. <laughs> <laughs> um, straw Dogs. Um, no. Uh, uh, You're Next. Yes. I like that yes. movie. Yes. Me too. I like it a lot. We should watch it for Squad. Um, Silent House. Yes. In Their Skin. Where one family wants to take over another family's life. No, but that sounds I know. scary. Oh my god! I want to see it too. It's got <laughs> Selma Blair in it. Ooh. Uh, static. 
No. Intruders? No. Emily? That's the babysitter one. Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, Tiger House? No. Hush? Yes. Don't Not breathe? Yes. I they liked don't, don't Hush breathe. quite a bit. I thought I... that was a good one. See, not that I'm – now, now we're getting into the age-old debate, thriller versus horror movie. I feel like oh, because the main character is such a badass, like, I, I was never really super scared for her. Like, I kind of was like, she's going to make it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So I felt like there wasn't really any tension of, like, is she? Because kind of the whole time I felt like she – I don't know. She was a badass. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, don't breathe. Yeah. Home invasion. I don't think so. Better watch out. Yes. Hell is where your home is. No, <laughs> that's a great name. <laughs> Breaking in. No. Some of these are really on the nose. The last one's called Villains. No. Which I think was another one I wanted to watch, but I can't remember why. Okay, any final thoughts about funny games or mm. home invasion movies in general? <laughs> Do you have a favorite, Mac? Oh, a favorite home in Well, I'll say for right now, Inside, because that it really did freak me out. I think, um, I, you know, home invasion used to scare me a lot more than it does now. I get kind of more terrified at the idea of like, uh, cosmic horror, like of things that you could never, I guess technically in this movie, they could have never avoided what happened to them. But, um, so sometimes real life horror is scary, but now my, um, it's just, my my brain like now i'm like oh what if somebody possessed my body and then used it to kill somebody that i love a la possessor like that would be scary um whereas kind of like mm -hmm. yeah i mean this would be scary <laughs> i mean it would be horrible <laughs> but you know um so I, I think when they're done well they can make you feel really uneasy but you also got to make it set up really well about why this person can't leave their house and i don't necessarily think funny games did that because yeah. I really didn't understand the world that they were in and why they couldn't get any help. Like there was absolutely, there was seemingly a lot of people who lived there, but nobody who drove. And, and also, yeah. like, I really don't think these boys were all that powerful. I think they probably could have been overtaken. Yeah. But I think because of the fact that they were so polite in the beginning, mm -hmm. that was their undoing. Yeah. Like you said, you would have been like, no, get the fuck off my porch. Like, go away. Yeah. You know, but they were like, oh, of course you can come in to my house, you strange person. You yeah. know, so. And that too, I didn't really, I, like, I understood a little bit of it in the beginning when, you know, she was like, oh, okay, yeah, like, I'll get you these eggs. And, you know, when they're still kind of like, even when he first breaks the egg, she's like, well, no use crying over spilled milk. Like, she's really nice about it. But, like, I I don't know why you – I really don't know why you would ever let them in. Like, I just don't know. Like, I just can't yeah. see it. I can't see a family – if somebody knocked on my door right now and was like, can I get some eggs? Oh, I live in your, your next-door neighbor. I'd be like, no. Go to the store. <laughs> like, leave me alone. So yeah, I, fuck I off. just can't see it. Um, I really like from this list, I really liked, um, play Misty for me, which I watched the other day. Mm -hmm. Um, like I was telling you, Julie Walter is legit scary just to look at her. She looks so harmless and cute mm -hmm. and, um, she was fucking terrifying. So that was great. And then, um, Black Christmas, of course, mm -hmm. and the uninvited guest, which we have to watch together. And then... You're next. I like that one a lot. That one's fun. It's fun. We yeah. have to get Quinn to watch it. She's very 
resistant to it. <laughs> I feel like it's not even that scary. It's it's more like a no. bloodbath. It's a bloodbath. A lot of cool kills. Yeah. Like, there's, like isn't there a kill with like character. a blender? Um, I don't remember. I think that. I think but... somebody's head gets put in a blender or something. Yeah, but but the the hero in that is a badass. She rocks. Yeah, she's cool. Okay. So, I actually don't have the little outro thing. Can you remember how oh. it goes? <laughs> um, well, well, host, thanks for listening and join us next week when we watch Let, let the, the right, right one in, in <laughs> and let me let in. Let me in. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> hey, well, host, you probably picked up from context clues that the main episodes are going to be bi-weekly now every other week. And on the off weeks, Quinn and I are going to do a mini-sode, which connects older movies to the main movie we just looked at. So next week, uh, Quinn and I will be looking at older home invasion movies. And the week after that, Mac and I will be looking at Let the Right One In and Let Me In. So thanks always for sticking around to the bitter end. We love you. Don't go into the basement.